Uh, we have Steve Mays. His uh, talk is called uh, KeyCAD in Action, a case study for stairwell lighting. Steve is a software developer, primarily, primarily working in Java for a large software company. He has rekindled, rekindled his interest in electronics through contextual electronics and enjoys pursuing projects that bring together both software and hardware. This is usually projects around the house that could use a custom PC, uh, PCB. Uh, welcome, Steve. Thanks. So, um, yeah, as said, um, I'm a software developer, but actually I started a, my uh, past life was actually industrial electrician, so I guess I was more at home with a screwdriver than a soldering iron. And, um, but I didn't want to stop there, so I did some further studies. And, um, and I actually was heading into the hardware area, but I got um, distracted into software. So, um, but, uh, so since then, yeah, I've just been, uh, just re as I say, re rekindled my interest. But, uh, so what this talk is about is just how I, as, um, as basically a, almost a beginner to, to back into electronics, and also to, to KiCad was able to, um, to realise this uh, a project of um, putting some um, stairwell lighting. So <clears throat> where it all started was basically our stairwell was quite steep, um, but it was also in the uh, 1970s style, and uh, we sort of wanted to change this. So uh, we got this idea of taking out all the, the wood panelling, but, uh, but because of the, the, the size of the uh, stairs, we still needed to have like, at least plasterboard at the back. And then I got these, you know, one idea starts with another, another idea, and then I decided that, well, this would be a great opportunity to put some network cable, obviously it was my idea, the network cable down, down the, uh, the stairwell, and also some coax for the, for the satellite. And then we got to thinking, well, the stairs are so steep, let's put some, um, some uh, foot lighting in. And of course, I can't stop there. Hey, how about some uh, motion detectors? And um, so, uh, so, yeah, I got the idea to thinking, but then... Uh, I didn't have a workshop. I think I had. I was doing some kits from from a, a local supplier, so I had a bit of you know, soldering practice at least. And uh, so I thought, well, how do I tackle this? And of course, the way you do it is what you do with you know what you can do at the time. So just off-the-shelf modules. I'd like to sell this. Is, I'd like to say this is rapid prototyping, but it doesn't look it. So anyway, but but it does everything that I wanted it. I, I wanted three zones because the houses in in Germany. That's where I'm living. Uh, sort of they're narrow, but they're quite tall. So we have a basement, we have a, a ground floor, there's a, f uh, a first floor, and then there's the roof space. So there's basically three sets of stairs. And so I have my three zones here, um, and I have a set of switches up here so it does exactly what I want. I, I can have them all on, all off, or being controlled by the motion detectors. It worked perfect for, uh, for about eight, eight years. I actually forgot, we just f forgot that it was sort of like, thing. But, what the problem was was that when I was installing this, I was thinking I'd really like to replace this with a, a microcontroller of my own and on my own custom board. But I didn't want to do, I mean, I could do this project, I guess, on Veriboard and stuff, but I just didn't want to go that way. I wanted to have my own. And I, at that stage, I just didn't really know where I could do this from. Um, and then I uh, sort of, yeah, just looking around, I discovered um, uh, KiCad through Chris's videos, the, the Blinky videos and then contextual electronics. And after doing a few of the, the exercises on there, I was realizing that I was actually at a stage where I could actually tackle this. I could uh, really have a go at this. And, um, <clears throat> but of course, um, being from the software, I like to model things first. So, and I discovered uh, SysML, and I quite um, like the idea of, of SysML. And so I could actually uh, just realize the, the components that I was thinking about. So I was having you know, my smart home system um, then I was having my, uh, my lighting controller, which was actually um, an I squared C device talking to a uh, Raspberry Pi. So that was an, another, another extension, another bit of scope creep here, was to have um, no longer switches on the thing, but actually being able to control it through, so like a tablet. Um, I squared C, uh, why I squared C? Well, I'd never really tackled a, an I squared C project by then, so I wanted to have a go at doing a, some, my own slave. Um, so I had these components, and I drilled down a bit further with uh, the SysML into just the, the unit, what, trying to identify well, what is it that I need to, to put together. So obviously a power system, a microcontroller, 
Um, then I wanted to have three zones for the, the LEDs, and then um, and th three at least three um, motion detectors, so I could um, uh, send those signals back to the microcontroller and get it all working. And that's that's basically um, separating out the, out the modules. But of course, as much as I like SysML and like uh, modeling things in it, it really doesn't feel like you're getting anywhere until until you get into KiCad. Then it feels like you're doing the real work. And um, I'll just, um, it's too hard to see, so I've just got this here. So just a, um, a couple of small things. So it's hard to read this, but basically, um, looking at other projects in this sort of area, I realized, I, and also from my background, I realized I needed to have at least two boards. I wanted to have at least a, a board for the 240 volts and then a control board. So the 240 volts, was, I was actually also referring to my, oops, my um, relay board. And, um, and so they're, they're connected through just these, these connectors. So I, I basically modeled this uh, separator using this, uh, just this, this rectangle here to separate the two boards. So I've got my relay board here and the rest of it is just the control board and mostly con um, connectors. But what I did here also was to utilize the uh, hierarchical sheets in KiCAD. So, so basically I took my SysML diagram and modeled it here in KiCAD using the, the, the hierarchical sheets. I added I guess, some optimizations and things in terms of changing things or adding extra sheets for just to clean things up. One example here is the relay. Um, one feature I really liked was being able to model a relay um, as one part, but, um, but in fact what I actually did just push that aside. Um, I use the, I think what the, the, the terminology is for this now, but anyway, but I moved, I basically in two units. So I had uh, the, the, the coil part of the relay, but I had to make sure that I um, adhered to the, the pin numbers. And, uh, and then on, and on the B part, I modeled the switch. And so the upshot there, if I can go back, yeah. So the upshot there is that I could just cleanly have just the, the switch parts here uh, for the, the 240 volt side. And then for the actual uh, LED drivers, um, I could model that uh, down in here and just keep it out of the way of the, of the other um, schematic. So um, the other thing I did here in this uh, um, was to, uh, rightly or wrongly, was to, was to just use just this, uh, the, like a, the normal ground here uh, pin, but on the, the, the power, on the relay board, sorry, um, I used uh, GNDA because I didn't want to have a net between the two boards. I, I had to keep them physically separate, and even on the when, when pulling them into the the, uh, the layout, they, they still I couldn't have a net between the two because I wanted them to connect through these connectors. Um, uh, what else did I find here? Uh, the, the microcontroller. I had done some stuff with the the Atmel, so I guess that's what I was staying with. But I wanted to keep it small, or smaller than what I had been using. And so I picked the AT2020. Um, that introduced a few challenges too along the way, or learning opportunities. And uh, for instance, um, the uh, I didn't realise at the time. It's, this is a, the, the classic of uh, not reading the the extra pages in the data sheet. But uh, that the 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 uh, although it's it, you can, it'll run at 3.3 volts, which I which I wanted it to do. Um, it's only programmable at five, and uh, so I was wondering why it wouldn't program. And then I realised, and then uh, so I, I just rather than oops, rather than doing any sort of fancy work around with uh, diodes and stuff, I just I mean one idea would have been to put this up to five volts, but I, I just wanted to keep it at three for this uh, exercise. Um, was just to put a jumper in here, and then so when I'm programming, I can just put, just put a jumper over to the five volt side, and then program it, and then just take it off, and that was fine. Um, what else we got? I think that's basically it. I think in the earlier versions, I had um, banks of um, LED, more LEDs here because I was wanting to um, indicators for all sorts of aspects. But then once I once I got all the, the firmware sort of bedded in, then I, then I for the final version I removed a lot of these. Um, that's about all I sort of really did with the the, the, the schema. And the main the main point is. The um, yeah, just the schematic, uh, the the hierarchical sheets, and then using the, the being able to use these units was a really help was a big help. So just jump back to the thing here. 
So, um, um, okay, so once I, once I had all this, uh, the, 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 the schematic done and I was happy with it, then I had to go into the, the layout. And of course here you're seeing my, my two boards. Now, um, the, what I wanted to do was have the control board at four layers and the relay board at two layers. Um, and the, but also I had to consider the fact that with the 240 volts, I, I made sure that I didn't have any um, copper pores in, on, on, on that side. And I uh, they had to refer to it because I couldn't get access to the standards, but I had to refer to a few um, online calculators to, to make sure that my um, track widths were okay and also that the spacing was also going to be okay for the 240 volts. And I also, um, I mean, with the because I'm used to the AS, the AS uh, 3000 rules, and so you're not supposed to have any exposed copper. And so I have my main, um, all the main traces and everything are on, on the bottom side. Um, so I've got these two boards, and I'm modelling them in the one file, but one's meant to be four layers, one's meant to be two layers. So what I ended up doing, when I was ready to, uh, to send them off, what I would do is just make a copy, two copies of the same file, and uh, then in the respective ones, I would sort of like in the, um, for the control board, I would remove the, the relay board, and then, but the, the, the extra step was with the relay board. I'd have to remove the control board, but set that back to a two layer. And then I generated the gerbers and everything was fine and it would come back, come back pretty good. Um, so this was the, one of the earlier prototypes that I'd put together. And so I, I could, you know, basically got it all uh, working, the firmware going. But it was pretty tedious to test, um, laying out on the, on, the, um, on the bench. So I, I put together a, um, a sort of like a rig where I could then simulate the three levels, just a baffle, sort of a baffle in between, just so that I could use my hand to, to make sure that, um, that it, there was no interference. And yeah, and I could just uh, work out the, the issues and stuff with that, so it worked really well. Um, okay, so then I was thinking about how do I get this on the wall? Like, I mean, I had this box, but, but there, then there was suddenly because there was more aspects to it. There was a, there was a Raspberry Pi, and then I had to power the Raspberry Pi, and I had to power this device as well. So I was thinking, well, what am I going to do? And I guess it's based on my maybe my industrial background and, and also living in Germany, I sort of w went for the, the DIN rail. And because, uh, I mean, the, the big selling point was the fact that I could get a, a cute uh, DIN rail enclosure for the Raspberry Pi. And, uh, and of course, then there was this just general purpose one that I could use. But this, this introduced a new problem, was that I already had these boards done. So, and uh, these, these, um, this DIN rail enclosure was was a completely different configuration. So I had to go back into the, uh, the layout tool, and this is where the dimension tool come in really handy because I could then model the um, the various aspects of the the enclosure the, and indicate which which parts um, weren't that uh, were going to be covered. And so I could make sure that anything needed to be visible at the, from from the top part of the the board uh, top part of the enclosure could be visible. Um, yeah, and I could just line everything up and make sure, because I was just going to use um, a pin header here, and that had to line up with the pin header on the other, oh, just use the mouse actually, oh, no, I can't, um, to use the, the pin header on the other side, so they had to line up and everything. Um, but th these boards were going to be, okay, these boards were going to be a lot dearer than, uh, than my other boards that I've ever done, so, and I was really uh, unsure about with how this was going to go, so, the, the best idea I could come up with was to actually just print them out, stick them on cardboard, and then sh shove them in the enclosure. And this worked a treat. I was able to then be confident that everything was going to line up and it was all also going to going to fit. So, um, yeah, and this is the the final unit on the wall. So it's a little bit different to the the first one, but we've got our uh, five volt and twelve volt supply for the. Um, I think, oh, that's why I used a 12 volt supply. I forgot to mention that. A 12 volt supply because I, I really couldn't find relays that were cheap and available um, under 12 volts, and so that's why I opted for that. And um, we've got the Raspberry Pi, then we have the three LED um, uh, drivers there. Um, yeah, and that's the, that's the, 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 the whole thing. Um, the, the mechanical clock is, a, is a, an enhancement in waiting. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> That's part of the uh, one of the next revisions will be to, to change that so it'll go to Astro time. Um, yeah, so just a final to wrap up. I 
I don't have anything with me to, to, to actually demonstrate it, but what I did is just make this quick video. So on the bottom here, we actually see a web UI that I created for it. So on the web UI, I can actually um, enable and disable the various zones. Um, and then just for a bit of fun, um, I, um, in using the I2C, I could allow the, um, the, the unit to um, communicate with the Raspberry Pi and then send that signal to the UI. So hopefully it'll work, yeah. So as I go down the stairs now, seem to be running down the stairs, um, we're able to see on the, on the web interface that the, the lights are coming on. So the lights will stay on. They're configured here for 10 seconds. I, the screen, the bottom, the bottom one's actually off, uh, off the screen. But um, so they're configured for 10 seconds. The bottom one's for 20 seconds. While you're on the stairs, the, the lights will stay on. But when you stop, then the, the top two for 10 seconds and the bottom one for 20 seconds. So there's now a 20 second wait while, um, yeah, the, the timer times out and then the, um, the lights will go out. So. And that's it.